And in that time, multiple conspiracy theories have sprung up. As a team, we have gone through them very meticulously, one by one. But we still have one more witness to talk to, a man who hasn't broken his silence in 20 years, a man who was with Orlando Anderson the night Tupac was murdered. Corey Edwards was with Orlando Anderson the night Tupac was murdered in Las Vegas. And R.J. Bond said that Corey Edwards told police that Orlando Anderson was cool after he received the beatdown from Tupac. Corey Edwards has remained silent for 20 years. Let's see if time has changed his perspective. Now, Corey, what happened at the MGM uh, between Orlando and people with the death row? I was at the bar uh, uh, buying some drinks. And somebody came up and told me, hey, man, they just jumped on nephew over there. So I got my bottle and turned around and saw him standing by the pole and um, went over there and talked to him. You know, I was just like, dog, what's up? You all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, what happened? Like, man, the tried to jump on me. And he was just like, you know, I want a fair one. Well, a fair one, that's, you know, in the hood, you know, I want a fair fight. So they had jumped on him, but now he want a fair fight. Come on, me and one of y'all fight head up. Corey, what happened next? I was like, man, look, we can catch up with all this when we get back in Compton, you know? And uh, Lane looked at me and said, dog, if it was you, you wouldn't want to wait till we got home. And when he said that, I was like, you right. Whatever happened in that video was going to be responded to. Most definitely. If you're just tapping in, I want to thank you for tapping in. You know, Mike Dorsey, I spoke about it. Mike Dorsey had a police file that had pretty much Corey Edwards. Seen Anderson near a bar after the fight and that Anderson didn't appear to be injured or two he supposedly had in his Mercedes out in the parking lot. That gun would reportedly be used in Tupac's murder. Orlando Anderson's friend, Corey Edwards, claimed when he was interviewed by L.A. police. Question. If you just tapping in. Do that look like the same dude that was on Ben Crump? A&E? Are they trying to play a spoof trick on us? Is this the same person? Discretion TV. Drop in comments below. Is this the real Corey Edwards? You know we tired of being lied to. Tupac people is a is a people of people we have zero tolerance for the bullshit. Is this really Corey? I'm gonna do it one more time. No, not yummy yum. I don't know, man. Okay, let's see the nose theory. I mean, this shot right here is just like a bad police shot. The cheekbones. I don't know. Years went by. We talking 27 years, man. Okay, let's get back to the narrative. When he was interviewed by L.A. police in 1997, that he'd seen Anderson near a bar after the fight and that Anderson didn't appear to be injured or too upset about what happened. So here we have Corey Edwards. He was in the MGM. And also, he was at the Luxor Hotel. Like I said on a previous topic... And I saw my friends at the bar, blank, blank, left and went to where her cousins were. 
staying at the Luxor Hotel. Major red flag that if this man was at the Luxor Hotel, his story might have a lot of holes in it. Let's take it back to his story. Let's see if time has changed his perspective. Now, Corey, what happened at the MGM uh, between Orlando and people with the death row? Uh, uh, buying some drinks. Somebody came up and told me, hey, man, they just jumped on nephew over there. So I got my bottle and turned around and saw him standing by the pole and um, went over there and talked to him. You know, I was just like, dog, what's up, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, what happened? And man, the tried to jump on me. And he was just like, you know, I want a fair one. Well, a fair one, that's, you know, in the hood, you know, I want a fair fight. So they had jumped on him, but now he want a fair fight. Come on, me and one of y'all fight head up. Corey, what happened next? I was like, man, look, we can catch up with all this when we get back in Compton, you know? And uh, Lane looked at me and said, dog, if it was you, you wouldn't want to wait till we got home. And when he said that, I was like, you right. Whatever happened in that video was going to be responded to. Most definitely. And we was all standing there talking. You know, they finna go over there to the club. And we rolled over there. Club 662? Yeah. To wait on them and confront them, make his response. We got over there and waited around for about an hour. Nobody showed up. So I said, man, look, man, we in Vegas. It's fight weekend. I'm finna go get some bottles and go back to the hotel. There was too many girls at the hotel. <laughs> I'm not finna be sitting in a parking lot waiting on some to pull up and we got all these women to play with over here. Yes, sir. That's what we came for. After waiting for... Tupac and Shirley to get there. Do you know who left with Orlando Anderson? Was it T. Brown? Was it DeAndre? Was it Keefe? Was it a white Cadillac? I didn't see any white Cadillac, and nor do I know who was in the car with him. It was two or three different cars. So you know what I mean? I don't know who all rode with who. I remember when we met with Compton Police Detective Tim Brennan now remember, Corey Edwards said he don't remember what car. Now he put three cars. In the original police statement, hold on. In one of the police statements, that Greg Caden put in his murder rap. I don't think they mentioned anything about a third vehicle. Let's run this back just in case of the narrative. Orlando Anderson. Was it T. Brown? Was it DeAndre? Was it Keefe? Was it a white Cadillac? I didn't see any white Cadillac, and nor do I know who was in the car with him. It was two or three different cars. So, you know what I mean? I don't know who all rode with who. I remember when we met with Compton Police Detective Tim Brennan, he mentioned the gun that was found in Corey Edwards' girlfriend's backyard. I've always been curious about that gun. Did at some point uh, uh, a gun was found? Uh, that they thought was used in the murder of Tupac Shakur? Yeah, it was found in my girlfriend's backyard. In your girlfriend's backyard? Yeah. A lot of red flags. Tim Brandon said he's the one that located in the office that that was the gun. Corey Edwards was at the Luxor Hotel with the same girlfriend story. It's a lot of it's a lot of like loopholes to make it confusing because of the police reports that was filled with lies.
Let's take it to Tim Brennan. Did she find it? No. Her father found it. Backyard? Actually, actually, he went in the backyard and his dog was running around the yard with it in his mouth. The dog? The dog. They had a pit bull and he was running around the yard with the gun in his mouth. And so did he... he... What in the American gangster Denzel Frank Lucas... I don't even think Tim Brandon said that. Called the police and reported yeah. it? Yeah, it turned it in. Why do you think the police thought the gun found in your girlfriend's father's backyard was the gun used to kill Tupac? I don't have no idea why they said it was a gun. And I didn't know if to believe it or not, because I thought they would be much more aggressive about doing things if it was the gun, you know? First, I thought it was some I still think it was, you know what I mean? That was about it. I, you know, I didn't know what else to think, you know? How would it end up back there, you know? Corey Edwards not only gives Orlando Anderson motive, but he puts him in the car actively searching for Tupac the night of the murder. And then there's this mysterious gun found in Corey Edwards' girlfriend's backyard. We have to find out more about that gun. <laughs> Trying to provoke anybody to do anything particular? Were you trying to provoke yes. or trying to get people to do things? Yes. Tell us what. Think. You should have. This gun was found in the backyard of the girlfriend of Orlando Anderson's friend, a Southside Crip who was with him the night of the shooting in Las Vegas. It, it just seems too big of a coincidence. And, you know, Corey Elwood says it's not that big of a deal. Well, I mean, you got to look at it in context. The gun's found almost two years after Tupac's murder. Probably came across as not that big a deal because there were thousands of guns on the streets of Compton back then. It's a Glock, and Glocks weren't unusual. There's really nothing that stood out about that gun. But to me, the key to this case is evidence, you know, and if you can find the murder weapon, that's a major break in the case. That's why I think it's important that we go talk to Tim Brennan. He was in Compton for a long time, long after Tupac's murder. Maybe we can find some answers. Okay. Hi, right, Tim, thank you so very much for agreeing to see us again. We still trying hard to figure this out. Should be figured out. We just talked to Corey Edwards, and the gun that was found in his girlfriend's backyard seems to be a big deal to me. What did you all think about this gun? I ended up finding that gun when I was assigned to the Biggie Smalls Task Force. I knew Compton police had 3,000 guns, many of them hadn't been test fired. Uh, so we were looking for a 40 caliber uh, Glock in the case of Tupac and a nine millimeter uh, handgun in the case of Biggie Smalls. I found the 40 caliber Glock that had a, a tag on it, a property tag from Compton Police. And the first thing I noticed was the uh, address on the tag. And I realized that was Corey Edwards' um, girlfriend's house. I've known him, and I knew that he hung out with the Southside Crips and Baby Lane, Orlando Anderson, and others, and was in Las Vegas at the time when Tupac was killed. And I looked at the date that the gun was reported found at the address, and I noticed it was the day after Orlando Anderson was killed. When I recognized the significance of the date and the location where it was found, I just said, this is way too coincidental. We need to test fire this right away. And I got it to an ATF agent that was assigned along with our task force and gave it to him that same day. It was entered into Nibin. And, and, and Nibin is? Nibin is a national ballistics uh, law enforcement network where um, crime scene bullets or casings are taken and entered into a computerized system like fingerprints that can positively compare casings and bullets. The next morning, I came in to work at the task force, and everybody there was excited and said, we've got it, that's the gun that they killed Tupac. 
Okay. And then what happened next, Tim? Uh, it was really strange because a couple days later, I come to work and everyone's not happy anymore. And they said that, uh, well, Las Vegas checked the weapon and they, they said that this isn't the weapon used in Tupac's murder. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's how, kind of how everybody felt. They came to a separate, different conclusion than we had come to uh, with the Niven testing on the weapon. If Tim Brennan's story can be verified, then that will bust this case wide open. All we need now is proof. What he's saying is explosive. Do you believe him? I do, I do. Um, I've been working with Tim and Bobby for four years now, but I know that's not enough. We have to corroborate this somehow. For something this powerful, we have to have physical evidence. It is imperative. So you and the team are gonna have to go back and look at every piece of information we've collected, review every document we've collected. We gotta move heaven and earth to see if this ballistics report exists I mean, if we can match the ballistic report of the murder weapon that killed Tupac Shakur, we can give Tupac the justice that he never got. Hello? Ben, you are not going to believe what we came up with. My mind is blown. I have to give this to you. You have to see this right You said, we've got it. Now that's the... Most people have no... Thank you for tapping in as we wanted Corey Edwards. Just trying to get all the info we could get on Corey Edwards. Okay. And then what happened next, Tim? Uh, it was really strange because a couple days later, I come to work and everyone's not happy anymore. And they said that, uh, well, Las Vegas checked the weapon and they, they said that this isn't the weapon used in Tupac's murder. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's how, kind of how everybody felt. They came to a separate, different conclusion than we had come to uh, with the Niven testing on the weapon. If Tim Brennan's story can be verified, then that will bust this case wide open. All we need now is proof. What he's saying is explosive. Do you believe him? I do, I do. Um, I've been working with Tim and Bobby for four years now, but I know that's not enough. We have to corroborate this somehow. For something this powerful, we have to have physical evidence. It is imperative. So you and the team are going to have to go back and look at every piece of information we've collected, review every document we've collected. We got to move heaven and earth to see if this ballistics report exists. I mean, if we can match the ballistic report of the... In my opinion, I want to see what you think about it. Confidential, the unsolved murder of Christopher Wallace. So this is from... LAPD task force on Biggie's murder. That's from the Biggie Smalls murder task force that was formed in 2006 that Tim Brennan was a part of. Tim was working on the Biggie task force when he found that gun. And the gun that was found the day after Orlando Anderson was killed? Absolutely. That's the gun. It says the Glock pistol was immediately taken to the ATF and test fired. A Niven computer comparison positively identified the Glock as the firearm used in the murder of Tupac Shakur. Says it right there in writing. And then this last paragraph, this is just shocking. They're saying that due to the sensitive nature of the weapon recovery, that this U.S. attorney who was assigned to this case, that he agreed with the LAPD task force detectives that this firearm should not be shared with the Las Vegas Police Department? That's the craziest part of all. They are saying, don't tell Vegas that this was the murder weapon. But Vegas has jurisdiction. That's Vegas's case. If this document is real, not only does this confirm what Tim Brennan told us about the gun testing positive in Los Angeles, but it also contradicts 
whether the gun ever went to Las Vegas as he was told. Absolutely. Where did you get this from? You told me to go back and talk to people. So I backtracked. I started calling everybody that we talked to pretty much in this investigation. Three hours after I did my last call, a confidential source gave me this document. This is a bombshell. This has the potential to be the smoking gun that has eluded this case for 21 years. We have to verify this. You have to call back to the people at LAPD. Yeah. We have to check with the people in Vegas. We have to make sure this is authentic because once this goes public, this is a bombshell. If what this memo alleges is correct, that the gun found in the backyard of Corey Edwards' girlfriend tested positive as the murder weapon, the fact that this information has never been shared with the Las Vegas Police Department could explain why Tupac's murder has never been solved in over 20 years. Can we see this document respectfully? Can we see this document? Is this something? Is this something that is not blurred out? Just shocking. Oh. Just shocking. They are some writing. And then this last for copyright, I'm pausing it. Paragraph. This is okay. What is this? Can y'all see this? I'm gonna zoom in this for y'all. Can y'all see that? On March 3rd, 1997. You know what's crazy? It's more blurry. Without the camera. On September 7, 1996, a large entourage of black gang members, including Suge Knight, Death Row Records, Rap, Tupac Shakur in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm reading this line right here. Mike Tyson, Bruce, and the fight also. Compton Kush, including gang member leaders, Elena Anderson, Dwayne Davis, and Corey Edwards. Corey Edwards' name popped up again. This is what? A confidential, the information contained documents, the chief of police only. Do not copy or reproduce unsolved murder of Christopher Wallace, investigative update. September 27, 2006. So here you go, another document with Corey Edwards' name on it. After the championship fight, the blood on Taraz led by Park Shug. If y'all could read that, thumbs up to you. Hold on, let's see. I think I saw another document. And then this last paragraph, this is just... Okay, I, I thought I saw, wait a minute. They got Bad Boy Entertainment all up in the, all up in the mix. Let me move the camera back. So I can frame respectfully. It's shocking. They're saying that due to the sensitive nature of the weapon recovery, that this U.S. attorney who was assigned to this case that he agrees with the LAPD task force detectives that this firearm should not be shared with the Las Vegas Police Department? That's the craziest part of all. They are saying, don't tell Vegas. If you live in Westchester County or upstate New Vegas has jurisdiction. That's Vegas's case. If this document is real, not only does this confirm what Tim Brennan told us, about the gun testing positive in Los Angeles, but it also contradicts whether the gun ever went to Las Vegas as he was told. Absolutely. Where did you get this from? You told me to go back and talk to people. So I backtracked. I started calling 
everybody that we talked to pretty much in this investigation. Three hours after I did my last call, a confidential source gave me this document. This is a bombshell. This has the potential to be the smoking gun that has eluded this case for 21 years. We have to verify this. You have to call back to the people at LAPD. Yeah. We have to check with the people in Vegas. We have to make sure this is authentic because once this goes public, this is a bombshell. If what this memo alleges is correct, that the gun found in the backyard of Corey Edwards' girlfriend tested positive as the murder weapon, the fact that this information has never been shared with the Las Vegas Police Department could explain why Tupac's murder has never been solved in over 20 years. Hi, Greg, how are you? Very good, how are you doing? I'm great. Can you take me through the journey of what happened once you guys found that gun on the task force to what was finally determined about it? What happened in between? So we ended up taking the gun out to Las Vegas after we discovered there was a match with Greg Caden for murder and gave the gun to Las Vegas PD. Their firearm together uh, began the process of looking at it physically under a microscope and making a comparison between our shell casing and their shell casing. And they determined that it was not a perfect match so that doesn't happen often, it just... The system says there's a match based on a photographic image, that it's just a high probability. Theirs is a more precise test. There's the test that um, it would be used as evidence in court. Um, you know, we're, our test is just basically a preliminary test in order to run our evidence against everything in the system and see if we can get a match, which we did. Um, we came back with a high probability, which raised our hopes. That's interesting. He's so definitive about what happened, yet there are people on the other side saying that gun never even made it to Vegas. It's now time to talk to Corey Edwards the second time and get his reaction to this memo. Hey, Corey, last time we talked, we talked about the good Corey Eretz. in the backyard of your girlfriend's house. Right. We came across this memorandum from the LAPD on the Biggie Task Force. Uh -huh. And it's an internal memo marked confidential. Uh -huh. They said that the gun found tested positive as the murder weapon of Tupac Shakur. I don't believe that was a gun. Yep, I would, nah, it would have been handled way different than that. When you see this document... <laughs> I don't like that smile you give him. Let's run it back. Park Shakur. I don't believe that was a gun. Yep, I would, nah, it would have been handled way different than that. When you see this document, do you think that... Respectfully, let's run this back. If you just tap and then we talking about this Corey Edwards, he was at the MGM, he was at the Luxor, they found the gun in his girl backyard. I mean, it quacks like a duck. Right? Yeah. We're taking it back to Corey Edwards. What if you could do? Everybody want to get paid respectfully. Thank you for your tapping. We on their neck. That's interesting. He's so definitive about what happened, yet there are people on the other side saying that gun never even made it to Vegas. It's now time to talk to Corey Edwards the second time and get his reaction to this memo. 
Hey, Corey, How last time we talked, we talked about the gun being found in the backyard of your girlfriend's house. Right. We came across this memorandum from the LAPD on the Biggie Task Force. Mm -hmm. And it's an internal memo marked confidential. Mm -hmm. They said that the gun found tested positive as the murder weapon of Tupac Shakur. I don't believe that was a gun. If I would, nah, it would have been handled way different than that. Drop your comments below. Do Corey look guilty like he was a part of it? I mean, maybe that's the wrong question. Do Corey look like he's being totally honest? I don't know. Too many smirking to me. Let me see one more time. I don't know. He's already in a police report, so we know he was there. As the murder weapon of Tupac Shakur. I don't believe that was a gun. If I would, nah, it would have been handled way different than that. When you see this document, do you think that Orlando Anderson killed Tupac Shakur? I'm gonna still say no. no. If you were Tupac's brother, how would this make you feel? I would probably be upset about that. I don't. I can't make sense of these questions. So basically, Corey Edwards saying Orlando was not the shooter. Is that fair to say? Do all the riffraff of mumbo jumbo? He said Orlando wasn't the shooter. Yeah. We was had gun. Yep. I Nah, it would have been handled way different than that. When you see this document, do you think that Orlando Anderson killed Tupac Shakur? I'm gonna still say no. no. If you were Tupac's brother, how would this make you feel? I would probably be upset about that. Yeah. We was half smart to get away with a lot of the stuff that we did, like in the streets or whatever, whatever. So we wasn't that stupid as kids back then. But we did dumb kid things, you know what I mean? Right. But that's not one of them. And so the LAPD... Thank you for your patience as I wait till this thing load. Just watching this footage with Pac. Got the gun that they said was a match for what was used in Las Vegas. It was a 40 caliber Glock pistol, correct? Respectfully, I'm gonna run it back. I was saying, just watching this footage with Pac, people were saying the Pele Pele Pac. Back here is the real Pac. This dude right here in the cut. How many lookalikes did... How many lookalikes can one man have? PD got the gun that they said was a match for what was used in Las Vegas. It was a 40 caliber Glock pistol, correct? Uh, yeah, correct. Okay. First of all, it was a situation where that gun was just through in the yard because it was just on the ground and they had a vicious dog. Mm -hmm. Nobody going, to, I couldn't even go in the backyard. So it was a situation where it was, you know, threw over the gate. How I got through over the gate, who knows? This gun that LAPD said tested positive as the murder weapon that killed Tupac Shakur is found in your girlfriend's backyard and you believe it could have just been randomly thrown. Let's run that back. I need to see his face expression. I tell you, corruption at its finest. LAPD on the. This is why she wasn't losing weight. Lord, everybody want coins. Didn't I just skip some ads? Biggie task force, uh -huh. and it's an internal memo marked confidential. Uh -huh. They said that the gun found tested positive as the murder weapon of Tupac Shakur. I don't believe that was a gun. If I would, 
Nah, it would have been handled way different than that. When you see this document, do you think that Orlando Anderson killed Tupac Shakur? I'm gonna still say no. no. If you were Tupac's brother, how would this make you feel? I would probably be upset about that. Yeah. We was half smart to get away with a lot of the stuff that we did, like in the streets or whatever, whatever. So we wasn't that stupid as kids back then. But we did dumb kid things, you know what I mean? Right. But that's not one of them. And so the LAPD got the gun that they said was a match for what was used in Las Vegas. It was a 40 caliber Glock pistol, correct? Uh, yeah, correct. Okay. First of all, it was a situation where that gun was just through in the yard because it was just on the ground. And they had a vicious dog. Mm -hmm. Nobody going to, I couldn't even go in the backyard. So it was a situation where it was, you know, through over the gate. How I got through over the gate, who knows? This gun that LAPD said tested positive as the murder weapon that killed Tupac Shakur is found in your girlfriend's backyard and you believe it could have just been randomly thrown back there by any... Ridiculous. Come on with the satellite. Drop them comments below. What in the American gangster Frank Lucas... Body. Well, he ain't answer. Dirt. Saying at Facebook. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Man's backyard has the potential. Come on. Got the gun that they said was a match for what was used in Las Vegas. It was a 40 caliber Glock pistol, correct? Uh, yeah, correct. Okay. First of all, it was a situation where that gun was just through in the yard because it was just on the ground. And they had a vicious dog. Mm -hmm. Nobody going to, I couldn't even go in the backyard. So it was a situation where it was, you know, through over the gate. How I got through over the gate. Oh, he's trying to guess, Corey? Drop some comments below. They reasoning for, for the gun to be back there and the way it was found, it hadn't been thrown over there. Cause they say the dog was too vicious. I don't know, man. Corey has a lot of shit with him. Who no. knows? This gun that LAPD said tested positive as the murder weapon that killed Tupac Shakur is found in your girlfriend's backyard and you believe it could have just been randomly thrown back there by anybody? Wow. Wow. I want to thank you for tapping in. I don't want to drag this. Corey Edwards. I'm going to do a part two. I just wanted to start that Corey Edwards file. Very suspicious dude. He was in the MGM lobby. He said he saw Orlando. He didn't look hurt. Orlando didn't look like he just had a fight. According to Corey's narrative, Orlando said he just want a fair one. But we know here on Discretion TV, there was no 13 on that jersey. People are saying Orlando was the patsy. Capo status, respectfully checking in, and now I'm checking out. See you on the next one. Peace.